Good. How are you? Good. Let me do a little, this is uh, intimate. A little fancy <laughs> I love this, yeah. I'm going to keep it kind of low key. All right. So, I was going to do a demo on how to paint bone today. Very simple. Um, I have three uh, skulls here from my action figure customs. They're called the Cracked Skull, the Cracked uh, Sculpt. Um, this one is primed with, already primed with Citadel Wraith Bone, which is what I like to start with um, before I start uh, painting. And then these two use, um, one of these uses Citadel Contrast Washes, and then the other one uses this new brand called <clears throat> um, Army Painter Speed Paint. And you can see, I'm going to pass these around, um, just check these out and see if you can notice any differences between the two brands. So it's, it's a very, um, the Speed Paint and the Contrast, they were actually made for miniature paints. Um, to get something to look really good quickly. It's a very liquidy, it's a wash essentially, but it creates a shading, a shading effect just by brushing it on. You don't need any skill to start, <laughs> just brush it on there. I knew some friends uh, used to do a podcast and they were doing uh, Warhammer stuff and I oh, think yeah. they had mentioned some of this. Yeah, and they so said it was definitely a game changer for them. Yeah, if you want something to look decent, quickly, especially if you're painting a whole army of miniatures, it's, it's a really cool product, but um, I started using, yeah, um, so this is the speed paint, and that's the contrast. Now, Nikki, with the speed paint, have you had issues with reactivation? What do you mean by reactivation? Um, what I've found is if, um, um, if I use the speed paint, <clears throat> let's say I let it dry like I would in any other paint, you know. 20 minutes before I feel comfortable throwing something else on there or, or I use my heat gun. Um, what I found is that if I use another speed paint or any paint that's a little more uh, liquid, it will start to reactivate mm, the speed mm, paint. Gotcha. And what people have been telling me is that if you're going, speed paint was intended, you know, to be the one, the mm. one coat or the, gotcha. you know, yes. one coat. But if you varnish between, like a spray varnish, I wouldn't use a brush on varnish. Right. Um, that then you can Absolutely. paint on top. Of it. Yes. So what what I noticed, I've only used it twice okay. so far. I've mainly been using the contrast for about a year. And um, what I noticed with the speed paint is, I usually let it dry for 24 hours before I do anything okay. else to it already. But what I did is, um, I used some speed paint okay. on that Minotaur's horns, and I went back with a clear spray varnish, and mm -hmm. it really washed it, it like washed away, it reactivated it, it like you said. And it, it kind of ruined it, so I had to go over it again with a, a coat of mm. speed paint to, okay. to get it. So you got to be careful with it and just kind of see how it reacts to different things. Um, but yeah, so that's that's your starter. Um, there's already kind of some nice shading built in. And then um, just a really simple um, process of dry brushing after that. So <clears throat> I have um, Citadel Morgast Bone. This has really, really good coverage. Um, it's a base. So Citadel system, if people haven't used Citadel, you'll see these little delineations above the name of the paint. So this is base, which means it's a good base coat. And then you'll see other ones that say layer. So they're not going to have as good coverage when you put it on at first. Um, so we're going to start with more gas bone, just some dry, bra dry brushing. And then we're going to go to um, the Ushabdi bone. For, to get some of the next level of highlights. And then for our edge highlighting, we'll use Wraith Bone, which is the, the lightest color, and we're gonna use that really sparingly. So um, I have a variety of different brushes here for, for dry brushing. Um, these larger ones are the, the Army Painter brand, and then I have some other ones from Green, Green Stuff World, um, which are really nice. Green Stuff World has a lot of great metallic, colored metallic paints and, and different kinds of brushes. And then I knew um, people would ask what other types of brushes I use, and there's variety. So um, this is one of my favorite brushes. I've actually had it for like three years now. Dennis Derby gave it to me. Um, and this is a Series, series 7 Windsor & Newton. And this is the type of brush that I use to apply the contrast. And then I'll also use this type of brush for, um, for painting like faces, like human faces, because it's super smooth. doesn't get um, clumpy or anything. So this, I'll pass that around. 
So you can take a look at that. Um, and then some other examples. This this comes on my Instagram page. I have um, a pinned post of uh, like a brush, a cheap brush set that you can get from Amazon with a variety of sizes. And um, and these are some of those those brushes from that set. So you can check that out. I, I can attest that those brushes they're fantastic for the price. They're yeah. fairly unkillable. Um, Green Stuff Worlds are also kind of unkillable. Um, but as long as you take care of them, you're great. If you don't take care of them, it's 20 bucks for a whole set, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and usually, I can usually get them to last like six six months to a year. Yep. And once they get kind of worn down, they'll get relegated to dry brush status. Because mm -hmm. when you start dry brushing, you're going to destroy your, your brush, essentially. Um, and that's why I like these, these brushes that are dedicated for dry brushing. Because they're more durable and it's easier to get the paint out of them when you're washing your brushes. Um, to kind of help with washing brushes, I use this product also from Amazon. Um, so just water, regular water, and, and that um, kind of helps that to get that dry brushing out. Um, one thing that can save you a lot of extra work is if um, you have different color families for dedicated dry brushes because if I go and dry brush something red there's still going to be a little even if I wash my brush really well there's going to be some staining in that brush mm -hmm. and if I want to go and paint bone it's going to turn paint so that's something I'm working on is just building up little collections of brushes dedicated to like families of colors so anyways that's my spiel <laughs> we'll get started here but feel free to feel free to ask questions and we can talk about other painting techniques too on painting because otherwise they'll be really quiet. <laughs> have you ever counted how many paints you have? I have a lot. I I just had my my parents just came came by and stayed with us and my stepdad walked in. He's like, "You have so many paints. <laughs> I can't. Even, it's, it's over over five hundred probably. Yeah, it's it's insane. I need like special displays just and like shelves and things just for the." Um, do you have normal go to paints. Oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, mostly citadels. You mentioned you prime in the rainbow. Yes. So do you use an actual primer? That that, that is amazing, right? Base. Yes, and it I get it in spray form. So it goes on super smooth. So check that out because I I cannot get it that smooth, and it would take. Ten times as long to, to hand paint it on there. So. I've I've found that if I use a makeup brush. You're gonna waste a lot of paint, but using a makeup brush with ray foam is a, a pretty good way to prime. But you will waste paint as opposed to using the spray gun. So your spray game must be down because I I could see myself getting pooling in some of the smaller places. Oh yeah, I, I take it everything outside because I don't have um, like a dedicated garage space, and um, I just take everything outside, put it on either like a head rack or a board, and and just hit like. 20 pieces at mm -hmm. the same time and you got it you have to have a light touch you can't sit there and and dwell because um you will get that cooling effect and it'll just kind of go miss i find that you know you kind of do like little spritz and keep a good amount of distance between the piece and, and your yeah you want to exactly you wanna, if you're going to do anything bring the piece do a pass one. exactly or do a pa or start here and, and pass, pass it, it. Yes. So you run through the aerosol mm -hmm. yeah, you've got to get exactly yeah. there's got there's got to be if there's anything on the tip it's going to come out. And yeah. if there's anything yeah. that's bunched up, it's going to come out. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to rinse it for a while. Well, you, 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 you want to kind of do a scene motion. You want to start here and then go across or however you're going to work it. So you still have the opposite. Yeah. And even even with an airbrush, I'll do the same thing. I'll start it. Unless I'm doing detail work where I think it is. With the airbrush, I'll start it. Look, you, know, you want to you want to round it up a little bit. Like, just start away yeah. from it if I'm a So now I'm getting the same amount of paint coming like that. All the time. You know, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get a little variation at the very end. Like, if there's anything on the end of that, and I can airbrush is gonna go right on the window. So I can see through the window and see the trembling, and they caught all the other stuff, so you get around all my room, my dining room, and stuff like that. So it's really smooth. It's pretty good myself. And there's some, um, so like some of the, the cracks in the, the top of the skull, I'm, I'm going across this way so I'm not getting my lighter color in that depth of detail. Um, so as you do the piece, you're going to have to move it around and, and change direction depending on where, where you want the paint to go. Um, 
can see what else do I want to say about. All right, use your hand. Um, yeah, I'm just taking the excess off <clears throat> of the dry brushing process on this paper towel. Any other questions so far? So how many layers do you put on an average piece? Like something like this. Something like this is going to be very simple. Um, so we have the, the primer, then the contrast treatment, and then we're going to do about three other layers of paint. Something like um, if I'm doing like a female face, it takes a lot of layers because you have to thin your paints out um, so the paint goes on smoothly and doesn't get clumpy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about that so much if it's like an orc and it doesn't matter if their skin's all rough and, yeah. and ugly, but like an elf or, or something like that where you want it really smooth, um, it takes, takes a lot. And, and in that case, you'd want to thin your paints out to be the consistency of roughly like skim milk um, and just do multiple layers. And, and you've got to be really patient because if you yeah. don't wait for it to dry, you're going to really mess it up. So, Yeah. You're, you're basically listing my strategy. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Yeah, I'm right very impatient here. Oh, Slash. Okay. Impatient. It's, I gotcha. <laughs> it's always good, like Nikki said, if you have multiple things that you are working on, like she said, like if you have things, you can hit them with the primer, then you can kind of switch over and do yes. something, let that, you know, dry and move on something else. Yeah. Yeah. And again, going back to that cross-contamination issue, um, you know, Make sure you have separate mm -hmm. bins of water if you're doing something red over here because you'll, you'll contaminate it and yep. start turning it pink. So. Everybody, just so everybody's aware, no limits in sales of uh, a four horsemen table. Oh, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. <laughs> and done. <laughs> Do want to get in here? And going back to what Nikki was saying, always keep your metallics separate yes. from everything else because that... <laughs> It's got the little flakes in there. And I'll get in your brush also. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah that makes it sense. Will. <laughs> it's so, the worst. Um, we did, I just showed him the different steps. So primed in wraith bone spray, and then this was um, speed paint, and then this one I'm doing was done in army paint with the wash. So. Oh, these these are a game changer. This was a, a tip from um, Tim Tim Peak. Do you guys know Tim? I know the name. Yeah, he's, he's um, these are uh, NECA headstands, and they're really cool. I used to use chopsticks, but this is nice because mm -hmm. you can set it down. Yep. And it's 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 nice if you're painting for several hours. Um, it's nice to have kind of a wider base to hold on mm -hmm. to because your hand will start to cramp up. Or at least mine. Yeah, I used to use. I used to have a spare torso that I would use. Oh, and that's that was, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. It was yeah, but those uh, now I'm onto those. Mm -hmm. They can be hard to find, but Toy Wiz W I Z. Yes. That's Has where I. Yeah. That's, a, that's and the actually the best I've price yeah. too. I think. Yeah. For this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so I'll pass this around. This is the first pass with just our first color, which is Morgas Bone. <laughs> I do, and these ones these ones are from Green Green Stuff World, which is basically the same thing. Um, I, yeah, for um, a long time I just used normal older brushes for dry brushing, and I finally caved and bought some dedicated ones. And these it, it changes everything just because you can get such better coverage. You notice the difference with these ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those Green Stuff ones are great, and then. For dry brushing, a lot of times I'll get cheap makeup brushes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can just chuck them when you're done, and um, and if you're going to be doing like very light dry brushing over a large surface, those are wonderful for mm -hmm. doing that. If you're going to blend in a color on top of another flesh color, I, I like using those. They're great for dusting toys too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do they shed a lot? The cheap ones? I have not had any ever no. shed. To be honest with you, if anything, they, they will pick. They'll pick up anything. Like if there's just lint, you want to make sure they're clean because mm -hmm. they yep. will pick up lint and they yeah. will pick up oh, dust. Yes. But yeah. I haven't tried the Citadel brushes. They might. They might also be good. So if we went. <clears throat> We went straight to the Ushabdi bone. We wouldn't get as good a, a nice solid coverage um, in some of like the the uniform spots. Um, so I really like more gas bone. That's like I found that like six months ago. It's kind of a game changer. Um, 
Okay, so then I'm going to, to start painting with a shoddy bone. You can also create really cool gradients and shading effects if you don't clean your dry brush. Because um, it'll there'll be a little bit of blending with your old color and the new color. So I do that a lot too to, to get some really nice shading. <clears throat> Another, another way of doing um, color transitions is just in the brush itself. Mm. And so I'm not gonna be covering as much of the surface with this. I'm gonna be hitting more of the high areas and the areas where light's gonna catch. And just being a little bit less liberal with the brush. Don't mind us, <laughs> What's that? So don't mind us, <laughs> oh, I'm just impressed. Yeah, we're just impressed. So were you always a painter before you did this, or did this kind of start? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I tried right. my hand around when I was like eight. I tried my hand at doing some D and D minis, and it um, actually really liked it. And me and my brother would customize GI Joes, and we painted some like model ships and stuff like that. So I, I did have a little bit of background in that, and then I, I did a lot of um, like canvas painting and like tradition more traditional stuff. Um, and I didn't do anything for a while. And Mythic Legions came out, and I, I was also into really into Ninja Turtles at the time. <laughs> and I wanted to to add some details and stuff, and so I started getting into action figure stuff then. Although my dad would like me to go back to traditional. He's like, no, oh, that's he thinks it's so cool, but he's like. That's really cool, but um, when did I start like painting? Painting? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, this is this is really fun, Dad. Maybe someday. <laughs> now, do you do you ever do you have like a magnifier at home and stuff? Because some of this stuff is really detailed. Yeah, I I am blessed with perfect vision right now. By the gods. Man, tells how you really feel. Just loves that shit. Yeah, I know, right? I, yeah. I, yeah. I know. I'm a real bi I'm not that. I'm not that age. Yeah. I, got, I know. I, I know. I won't always have and it. I've got but the thing over, <laughs> and I've got to. I got to use it while I can. But I do have a magnifier. Um, it's it just kind of. It's hard for me to to use it. I'd rather just. I rather me too. I just look at it plain because it. It messes with me. It messes with me. Yeah, it messes with me. Because I'm not used to it being magnified. And it will exhaust you. Yeah. Your eyes will get very tired. Drew Grubb sent me a picture of him once. Someone, he had the goggles. Yeah, the oh, goggle the ones. Goggles, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wear I wear the goggles whenever I'm getting in that deep, but I have really bad vision. Yeah, I, they're they're great. I would never be able to do eyeballs. Yeah, and I still only get one. I right? do them, <laughs> and they're they're like, pain. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my my pro is that I'm. Uh, nearsighted, so I can look up close. Oh, nice. You know, if I have to hold it out here, yeah, there's some good. All right, I'm gonna pass that around. So that's our second pass with our, our second good color. One. There's some good cheats for eyes. On if you ever watch Squid Mars YouTube channel, he has a one yeah. video on eyes that I, I send to all of my friends. Yeah. Um, but he has one on eyes where he'll cheat and use um, gosh, the pens, the pens, the felt pens, um, felt tip pens, very particular micron pens. So that's because mm -hmm. those those don't have like that weird sheen that markers do. Yep. Because um, it's just pure ink. But I mean, there, you can find the perfect size for whatever sure it's eye a felt you want. Have your felt tip. You can just dot that right in. Mm -hmm. or come in at an angle, and um, right. and and then there's your your your, your guideline. I always go in with the pencil first and find my eyes, mm -hmm. and then going less and less as I've now that I know how to paint a little better. But until you can get that that point where you know where you can just put the paint on and yep. there, yeah, those those micron pens are great for doing that. But squid mark, yeah. So this is the point really rigid? So like, yeah, you know, some push of them into a hard. Yeah, yeah, there there are some of them. Yeah. There are some of them that are. It depends. Like I, I get the whole set, mm -hmm. and some of them are a lot larger than you really want. Um, but if you're using a larger yeah, size, yeah. and then the other, if you want to make the, make it bigger, so you find your point, and yep, and just roll around. I got a trimmer. <laughs> I'm gonna start to go see Noah for a little like, bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, prime it again. <laughs> oh, let me just show you. What'd you say to him? Yeah. And he's out. <laughs> yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay. Um, so now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush, and we're gonna just do our edge highlighting um, with the wraith bone. And remember, that's our like original color, so it's gonna be. Be pretty light, and we're just going to get the, the very lightest edges where light's really, really going to catch. And of course, there's like 
many, many different ways to, to paint skeletons and, and bones and everything, but this is just like a, a quick, um, one quick way to do it. Do you ever use light to show you where light is going to hit? I know that sounds like a weird question. Um, yeah, you, you can do that. And then um, Eric Miller um, showed us a way, if you're doing airbrushing, to figure that out where it would. So he started off, he would prime in black. because He does a completely different mm -hmm. painting method than I do. Um, so he'll prime the piece in black. And then the first color he takes, he he hits it and that is, um, it's like a white color and that tells him exactly where to put all his highlights. Mm -hmm. So that's one way of figuring that out. Um, but yeah, we're, um, Stelio started the um, My Action Figure Customs Painting Academy. So he's he's been getting all the, um, the artists associated with my action figure customs to do um, a YouTube show and uh, posting usually, what is it, twice a month or what? Uh, uh, we try to do yeah. twice a month. It was a little lack this month because of, you know, mm -hmm. um, Legion's Con and all that. So I didn't want to bother anybody on top of them making their customs. Like, hey, do a show also. So, <laughs> um, But we'll, we'll be having one um, maybe towards the end of this month. Uh, we have the artists lined up and all that. We just have to, you know, kind of set a date. So... Definitely, guys, grab a sticker, give us a follow on YouTube, and, you know, it's uh, it's definitely for you guys. It's it's very user-friendly. It's to gain information, so um, definitely sure. check it out. Yes, Nikki is, is our first episode on the show. and mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've only got a couple, but just seeing the lack of waste of paint there so many times we're all mm -hmm. pour out my like, colors into my tray. Oh yeah. That's and the Yes. Daddy, daddy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too that you mention that because people either hate the citadel containers or they, they absolutely love them. And I love the fact that you can just kind of work out of it. Because, like you said, you know, you're saving a lot of paint. I was prior to switching over to Citadel, I was using Ar Army painters, yeah. and they're great, good paints if you kind of get mix them right and you do you kind of follow their directions on how to get their paints working right. They're, I would say, if you're first time kind of getting into it, they're not very first time user friendly because of that reason. You kind of have to get that consistency because it'll you can get the color of it, but it has this sheen to it because I mm -hmm. think they add something to preserve the paint. So you got to make sure you dump all that stuff out, shake it really, really oh, well, yeah. um, and then you just have to play with the color and make sure that it's that, that right consistency. Um, otherwise, it just doesn't spread right and it has this gloss to it. So you're talking about army army painter, yeah. Yeah, I have only a couple of blacks of grays, mm -hmm. but a little bit of water. Exactly. Sometimes it's just, yep. sometimes it's just the water on my brush is enough. It's exactly right. yeah. You take that and get a little swizzle. That's a great Excellent stuff, yeah. Yeah, I did yeah. it mm -hmm. very early when I oh, was good. first uh, started. Yeah. My, 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 that for me, yeah. I say, I, I, I don't think I'm going to build one every time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, and we actually have uh, one of the episodes. We'll we'll give you the poor man's guide to making a, a wet palette. <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely you know you can definitely get a wet palette together at like you know the dollar store for like four bucks. You know so, and it's a great thing to have. Like you said, you know it preserves those paints. Like yeah. you wouldn't think it. You're like it's well, just you know two days. yeah. Like, you I, know. I bought one. <laughs> I know, but I just I just wanted to just get it done. <laughs> well, the nice thing if you do buy one though, it's like they come with like you know hold your brushes and you know it'll have some extra things that you can you know use. So. You guys have rack systems that you prefer? What was that? What about the rack system, Nikki? <laughs> oh yeah, I actually use. Um, nail polish holders or like a, acrylic mm -hmm. uh like a tiered shelf it's all clear and everything so if you have like a counter space or something those work really well you can put them next to each other mm -hmm. um but 
it's also sometimes nice to have like wall mounted ones. Yeah. If you don't have a surface or anything. I have a spice rack. <laughs> it's yeah, like a three tier spice rack, and I'm like, mm, yeah. there we go. Exactly. But it's completely full now, so I have to find something new. Cool. So I'm going to call that done for now. Check that out and see. And then that doesn't get a wash, or it does get a wash? Nope. That's it. Okay. Um, so the wash happens. I do it ahead of time with mm-hmm. the contrast. Right. Um, sometimes I will paint a piece with a, a base color or whatever and then add a wash after that. But it oh, just thank depends. You so much. Yeah. I've destroyed pieces because I'm like, and now the wash. It's like, <laughs> no. Well, same, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then. Skele- yeah, this is actually. Skele- uh, that one was skeleton core contrast, and this one's the army paint one. So I just started with it instead of doing it after. So the YouTube channel is uh, the My Action Figure channel, okay. um, and I think what there's five episodes up. Five, yeah, five yeah. episodes up so far. Yeah. Cool. You're both affiliated as artists, or are you from? Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm with the okay. with the May uh, the My Action Figure Customs guys, you know, just right. helping them out and all that. And yeah. I'm, you can say like a like a Padawan <laughs> right now. <laughs> I, uh, I We'll get one. Oh, awesome. One day. One day. One day. One day. Yeah. <laughs> Next year. Yeah, there's a few uh, the painters that are, we'll say, affiliated. So um, sometimes we help, you know, paint something up for if it's premiering or something like that. Um, and uh, going to conventions and things like that. Um, but yeah, Stelios, Stelios is started the channel and we all thought it was a good idea just to, to do that and just kind of put some, some different ideas out there. Yeah. Very good. Any other questions about? I had another question too yeah. about the. Uh, I think it was you who did the like color palettes. Like, here's the the, the colors that closely match like midday green over. And stuff oh like yeah. That. Yep. Now is that that's a mix of different paints, right? Yes. And I was wondering if you do you uh, pre mix those those handy. Um, or do you have to go yeah. through and do it every time you want to do it? Again? That's a good question. Um, definitely, I recommend writing the formula down because you'll think you're going to remember it. You never do. <laughs> um, at least I don't. Um, but I don't. I don't usually pre-mix. Um, I'll do it on the spot and just look at my formula. Yeah. You, you, might, you might get a little bit. Yes. yes. But with Citadel. I my way is definitely not scientific. I'll take like a really tiny brush like this and scoop a little bit out, and that's like my drop. Um, so yeah. most of my brushes are all different colors on the ends. I'm doing that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it does waste some paint. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Drop droppers for like a whole bag of like three bucks. And then Lou, um, one of the episodes is with um, mm-hmm. Lou, and he did. Um, he puts uh, like ball bearings in these, so it helps to mm-hmm. yeah, mix it. Yeah. I haven't yep. done that yet, but I, I need to. So that yeah, helps. Have you seen the? Yeah. Um, I think JD showed us the tattoo. Oh, I don't remember. So the ink shaker they use for tattooing, little like round pop. Oh, interesting. You just you push the uh, the jug down, put it back down, and it shakes it. So it's like a paint, mm. like a paint. It's like a mixer, yeah. Paint oh, cool. Yeah. So, it's funny that you mentioned yeah. that because I was like, man, I'm gonna come up with a patent to shake your miniature paints because my hand hurts from shaking these. Yeah, there you know? you go. <laughs> hey, you out of here? So it is my my head's at oh. leisure. Awesome. At your leisure. Thank you. All right. Get it. Y'all have fun. Thank you. 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 All right. He never kisses <laughs> me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Not in public, at least. <laughs> 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 My pleasure. Nice yeah, absolutely. Man. <laughs> Take care. Uh, mother, right, I say I say enjoy enjoy on the top. <laughs> no love every time. Uh, and I would think after so last night he would be a lot more affectionate. Uh, okay. Just love me later. Assistant. Question. That's a good. Yeah. Let me think here. What character am I thinking of? <laughs> right. <laughs> Five brushes, keep them separate. Mm-hmm. 
That's the hard part for me. Again, the daddy! It's like, oh, uh, and, and then the brush goes into the pile of brushes. Yeah. That's why we didn't have kids. We knew we would be painting. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, and kids know I'm a painter. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, any other questions? It's, it's amazing seeing something just come to life. Yeah. You know, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Like that's yeah. that's my problem. Is like anxiety. You don't have mm-hmm. process, right? I don't have process. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, oh, like now. Okay. Let me go down and get a soda and think about it. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes I'll come up with like ways of doing stuff. So the first episode we talked about orders of operation of how to paint a piece that has like mixed media. So it was an orc that had some metal on his face, and then there was horn in the metal, and then there was his face. And it's like, okay, you could you could do it a couple of different ways, but when you start to dry brush, you're going to get you know some errors on what you've already done. Yeah. So it's it's always a decision, and sometimes I'll make I'll go down a certain path. Now I have spent twice as long correcting what I need to correct. I do a lot of my stuff has that takes to so I've got that path at least in my head. Not even bothering basically the thing I know is gonna get hit with my dry brush. Go and do the next layer and the next layer, and then you might have to go back to the layer one. Yep. Exactly. Now I might go back. Um, that? Let me look at that one. So I like how um, the eye sockets are pretty dark on this one. Yeah. This one didn't get as much coverage, so after I'm done with this, I might go back with like a little bit of um, a darker color and do that just to, to darken up the eye sockets. Or you could like paint them black and, or and, and do like a glowing eye or something like that. Depends on what you just want. So, yeah. Um, for the shading effects? Yeah, usually. Um, sometimes I will go back in with, with, um, let's say pallid bone in this case or skeleton cord if I wanted to darken an area and give it an extra shadow effect. It just depends on the piece, but yeah, that is a possibility also. But you know, and you'll notice too, like some, some pieces, um, like these, we're, pretty, we're finishing pretty quickly. I would say on average it takes me about an hour to do one piece, like one one head or one shield or something like that, so, but some sometimes you can do things much, much quicker, and that's nice. So which one of you guys remembers what that primer was that she uses for the head? What's it called? Oh. You said it first. Eric said it first. Oh, I see. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Eric. Since you said it first, I hand it to you, and then if you feel like you know you want to pass it along, go ahead. If you want to hold on to it, you're more than welcome to. Thank you for being here, and thank you for watching the show too, man. You know? Yeah. I'll yes. <laughs> it's like Andy, like underneath. Nikki. Nikki. You got to do full Nikki Nicole. You can't even talk about you, Eric. Yeah, we're just yes. talking about you. It wasn't good, but no, no, no. <laughs> but we enjoyed no. some of Noah's uh, breakout too, and then I gotta get ready for my What time are you? What time are you up? Uh, right after. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Are you in the same yeah, right? Actually, right. Mm-hmm. Cool. Oh, actually, we're. <laughs> I had a breakout. Also. <laughs> that was totally different. Nobody wanted to see that. So Ryan, who is just in here, he got. Um, his his head 3D scanned to get his likeness. Cool. Uh, so he wanted me to, to paint them for him at some point. Nice. So that's challenging. Faces are always mm-hmm. a, bit more ch- a lot more challenging. Did Brian do that? Um, yes, Brian Almeida. Yeah. So that's where you say you get your paint down to like skip the consistency for the face. Yes. Unless you're doing airbrushing, which I haven't tried. <laughs> I got my butt scanned. That's be a lot easier. I don't think you need the same thing. Yeah, the eyes. Yeah. 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 
No, but you need like a wire brush to do the hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, I wax. What are you talking about? Dude, it's 2022. Hand scheme. Right. Right. It's right. It's right. It's right. I can never win. <laughs> And um, like with this sculpture, because the, the skull is actually cracked, you can create a cool effect by getting, if you just get like the top edge highlighted, um, and then the, the inside basically of that crack is still kind of kind of dark. So. Speaking of crack. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, I didn't pursue that. No pun intended. You know, the guy who... That was the perfect segue. <laughs> is, what are you suggesting? <laughs> Call it a segue. Okay, it's a segue, yeah. So this is um, just like solid form. Um, and you know, there's tons of painting that's just gross. But um, anyway, so I go to my sink, get my brushes wet, mush, mush them in there, get the stuff on, and then and then clean oh, it with my... Like soap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a... Yeah, it's like a... It helps to reshape the Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm -hmm. Just takes a breath. Oh, cool. Excellent. So what have what have we covered in those episodes so far? Um, Did order of operations. So for the Nikki first was one. order of operations. Um, Lou was uh, just kind of doing um, painting a torso, um, and just kind of going over you know different shading and stuff, different shading techniques for that. I believe after Lou was it you? Or, yeah. So Eric um, was nice enough to show us how the whole spray paint, you know, if you're doing um, airbrush, not spray paint, air, airbrushing, he kind of showed us how that whole thing operates and what his techniques are when, you know, he's kind of trying to work on a piece. Uh, and then after that, we had Perry, who showed us some sculpt work, working with the green stuff, if any of you guys are familiar. Yeah. Um, so he was kind of doing some sculpt work, and he showed us that, which was really nice. Which um, episode? That was episode four. Four. So four was with Perry that he did sculpt work in it. And our latest episode was with uh, Rich, uh, Rich Kais. And um, he did some skeleton work, which is like this. He's like the skeleton god. And um, he showed how to do like, you know, additional Dremel work and, and, you know, creating on top of having a 3D piece, like adding on to that and, and making your own design. He actually, this had that Nikki's painting. He did the same exact head, but he got this helmet, cut out the side where the, the hole is on the cranium, um, and just basically made it look like some guy just got bludgeoned oh, and like dang. the whole helmet cool. the whole helmet and the whole skull is just cracked. Oh, and it just it looks phenomenal. It's so good. Yeah, he still has a lot of stuff on the yes, right now. Yeah. So if you have a two pounds table, definitely Anything you say to him, he'll just start laughing. So and his laugh is very contagious. Oh I thought it was just me. Oh, right? <laughs> but I was like, charming. Funny. Yeah. He texted me this morning, he's like, Happy birthday, little guy. And I walk up to him, I'm like, I'm not little. And he just he just starts losing it. And he's like, Huh? Yeah. yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you, guys. Happy Thank you. Birthday. Thank you guys so much. This, this is, this is the best birthday, birthday gift ever, man, being here with you guys. He said so. happy birthday to me. Let me record you saying it real quick. No, no. <laughs> Alright, so I got I got a little bit of brush stroke on, on part of it, so I'm just gonna go back with my darker color to to work that out. And yeah, I was wondering. No, you wouldn't. You can't even see that. <laughs> you were turned, babe. Yeah. You were turned. Um Yeah, just a little on the side. There's part of it's the print. There's mm -hmm. some print lines in there. Um, but yeah, there's just some like some lines that I wanna downplay a little bit and some yeah sometimes if you have too much um paint on your brush you'll get that uh, like a streak basically all you guys have paint just impress the shit out of me is it, you know is it yeah. too dry to just use a paint with no brush on it to maybe go over it and blend down the lines um 
So you, yes, yeah, in this case. Yeah. That's all right. Nikki, a uh, quick question. If you have an issue where um, you paint something and it, it's a little, you know, like I, I've noticed that sometimes when you thin the paint, you'll paint something and one part will kind of have a little excess paint and then you'll accidentally hit it again and you know the edges have dried. Yes. And is there a good technique that you could recommend to kind of fix that or you just kind of have to just go just over it? have to go over the whole yep. thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, have the patience and yep. the that's right. Say okay to do I think that's what so my wife have, doesn't understand. Um, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, my wife doesn't understand. She'd be like, Oh yeah, you can go and paint and then I'll start, set everything up. She's like, Can you help me with this? It's like, yeah, let me just put everything down. <laughs> you know? It's for me. Oh, masters! I have I have a couple of masters. Degrees. Yeah, they have um. What do you use? What do you use for the paints? The paints, mostly silver. Yeah. yeah. So the master series, um, you want like an art eighties paint match, that weird blue gray. Yeah. They have a color that's like almost perfect. It's very that's a very hard paint match to do. Um, the master series paint. I have it, I'll have to post it because I can't remember that. They have weird color range. Yeah, they do. They have awesome yeah. color range. And their dry range, they have a yellow one. Uh -huh. It doesn't look like it would work, but it's the perfect color for that. It's like the color range. It's like all like shady. It's like the color range. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. yeah. The highlights on the skin. Because it doesn't look yellow on the figure. Yeah. And it goes on. It's like, exactly. So. You have an idea for this one? Or? I don't. I don't either. I'm almost like trying to think. I know, me too. I was like, today, so. I was like trying to yeah. think, but I'm like, ooh, Nikki's talking. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hi, everyone. So that's the catchphrase for Nikki. Hey, everyone. And every. Yep. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the initiating yeah, uh, sentence. So yeah. <laughs> I noticed I, I do that to you. Okay. Um, I am thinking of. Let's see. One of the original evil characters from Wave One. If anyone can guess what I'm thinking of, this guy's yours. Both are. Chlamydia. Nope. Did you say chlamydia? <laughs> yeah. Wrong subject. That was for you. Yeah, was. Dude. I was thinking about it over there. Dude, I'm. So, Wave One, first I'm... Kickstarter. Bad guys. I mean, it was like. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Nice. I need that stand back, though. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering about that. Uh, I, know, right? I, have a, I have a bag for it. Uh, it's funny in my head. I'm like, Orga? 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 What is it? No, that's I'm serious. serious. Yeah. It's just there's so many damn names yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, now there's so many names anymore. It's like, ugh. We also have a couple of uh, shirts. My action figure custom. Or, no. Yeah, custom uh, painting academy shirts. XL and large, that's the only size that I have, so either gain or lose some weight, they don't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's a good motivator. Hey, there's right? no Game. filter here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it going off all the time? No. All you have is large? Well, I have large and extra large. This ah. is, I just brought it to kind of show what it looks like. It's right here, babe. You can so, you're painting. Look at that. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, if anyone has questions, <laughs> um, Instagram is the best place to, to ask me. I'm checking emails over there all the time. Facebook's a little harder for me, but happy to answer questions. And, um, so we can just reach out to you? Yes. Now yeah. I have to learn how to do slide in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> can I take a picture? Yeah. I do get lost there. Come on. Can I take a picture with you? How about I just take a picture of everybody? Oh, that's awesome. a good picture. Yeah, I think that'd be great. What do you think for the shirts? I was thinking. I don't know. I just I'm like brain dead right now. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's all. A <laughs> yeah. 